Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends. So this is the Colors of Prague. I uh, actually didn't schedule this show, but uh, I decided to do one before Cruise to the Edge. And then on the next one you will see will be my uh, thoughts on Cruise to the Edge, uh, the progressive rock cruise that happens, used to happen yearly, hasn't happened in about three years. But in any case, uh, it's a little bit of a format change this time. So uh, what's going to happen is I just chose four different albums, four different bands. And um, I'm going to start with Emerson, Lake and Palmer. Iconic. This is Brain Salad, Salad Surgery from 1973. It's the fourth album from Emerson, Lake and Palmer. And uh, beside featuring their adaptation and version of the William Blake, John Perry, Old English tune, Jerusalem, um, this feature still You Turn Me On, which was a FM radio staple for many years, um, as well as the entire card, which fills the entire side too which has that line. Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends. Come inside, come inside. Um, my goodness, you know, those of us uh, of age, remember the days of great FM radio when uh, they started late at night playing album sides. And then uh, as time went on, AOR, Album Oriented Rock. So they would just, see, record labels uh, would, would really want the DJs to play the hits. And it was cool that at some point in time on FM radio, the DJs, the more progressive ones, I'm not talking about progressive rock, but the more progressive DJs decided to play the deep cuts. And everybody who has serious knows deep cuts is great, you know, but... Back in the day, way pre-satellite radio, to hear a song you really like, let's say Moonlight Mile on Sticky Fingers, or let's say, uh, my gosh, there's so many, there's so many, but that's a good example, though. I really like that song. Um, so DJs would pick their favorite songs and play them. Hence the birth of AOR, Album Oriented Rock, they would just pick a tune they liked, and then suddenly these things became favorites of people. Let's get back to ELP. So this is the album that really put them over. Over the top in terms of popularity and commercial success. Now some say Tarkis. 1971 and their second album is truer to the melding of classical jazz and hard rock, which some call progressive. Um, and that brain salad surgery is too busy, too overblown. I personally disagree, though. Uh, it's definitely something musically, it's very different. Um, it may not be easy listening to some, but it was a formidable forward move for progressive rock. Much like Yes and Tales from Topographic Oceans, also 1973. And, you know, guys, the, the original album and this H.R. Giger die cut fold out sleeve. Actually, Giger would, H.R. Uh, Giger's a uh, an artist who, uh, well, most famously uh, worked with Ridley Scott uh, designing the uh, creatures and atmosphere and sets for Alien. And I believe Aliens too. Aliens also, the sequel from. But he also did the same thing for Debbie Harry from Blondie. For, for one of the Blondie or Debbie Harry solo albums. This original album release also had this cool Giger-esque fold-out 
kind of thingy with each band member. So we had Keith Emerson, Emerson Lake, Carl Palmer. My goodness, he was young. So sometimes original vinyl is a marvel to behold. Because sometimes the originals don't have, the reissues don't have this. So anyway, you know, it's, it's avant-garde at times. It's British music hall at times. Uh, Emerson and Lake particular, like, particularly like to experiment with those kind of idioms. You know, I mean, you want to you play somebody in an album that, oh yeah, Keith Emerson, he's a keyboard player. Phenomenal, phenomenal keyboard player. This is one of the few of the early ELP albums that are just so terrific. Brain salad surgery. But speaking of Keith Emerson, he actually, on days off, years off from ELP, he did uh, some solo work as a soundtrack artist. And he worked on films. So his earliest solo work was as a film composer. He worked with Dario Argento uh, on Inferno. And uh, his third soundtrack and third solo album was Nighthawks, which is a pretty terrific Sylvester Stallone film, uh, I have to say. Uh, no kidding. It's a, a gritty, Thriller starring Stallone, Billy D. Williams, and Rucker Hauer. And the soundtrack plays around with themes uh, from New York in the... Early 1980s, when it was uh, a scuzzy town. I know, I lived in New York during that time. So there are familiar themes from ELP music. Uh, he also recomposes the old uh, Chicago Transit Authority song, I'm a Man, from one of the early Chicago tunes, into his own work. And as a soundtrack, it also retains the action cues, but there's also more symphonic prog and odd avant-garde sounds than you would expect. There's a, a few vocals uh, sung by Paulette McWilliams, credited to her as such. And even Keith handles a vocal on the I'm a Man cover. This also has a die cut sleeve, which is which is pretty interesting, featuring scenes from the film and actors from the film. It's actually, I mean, is it essential Keith Emerson? I wouldn't say so, but it's nice to have. Wonderful photo of him in the back. And he composed most of this on the Fairlight, which I will get to in a moment, because at this point in time, it was a, uh, a digital computer-based mixing and recording software. So Nighthawk, Keith Emerson. Um, I think of the soundtrack music, I really liked what he did on Inferno. Argento, which is pretty much readily available. Um, this is not so much so, but uh, I could be wrong. This is actually a half-speed remaster. I didn't even realize that. So, nice. A terrific movie if you haven't seen it. And good Emerson. Jumping off. Next, we got Jan Ackerman and the Sven Lear. It's called Focus. This is not a Focus album, though. Ackerman split from Focus many years previous, and he reunited for Thies in 1985. And so, I mean, being the two premier members of Focus, it was nice to have them reunite. Kind of strange that they would call the album Focus. Anyway, it's actually a rather jazzy with Middle Eastern elements. Uh, 
I wouldn't say new agey at times, but it's definitely not focused as we're used to. If you compare it to the earliest three or four or five focus albums, but it's quite good. Um, it was primarily performed by these two guys, Jan Ackerman, guitar synthesizers, assorted instruments, and these fan there. These are the back cover folks. This was uh, released in 1985, I believe. This is from the Mercury Netherlands label. So I'm not sure if this got a US release, but in any case, it's quite good. So the Fearlight was an early computerized software, much like um, PreSonus, Studio Box, things like that, that a lot of us use today to record uh, or do podcasts. And uh, there's only four songs on side one and three songs on side two. Side two has some of the longer twos. Um, and there's a few mus musicians helping out. But if you really like Focus and want to see a reunion with these two guys, this is definitely worth checking out. Um, it's just more mellow. <laughs> anyway, Focus, Jan Ackerman, and Thies Van Leer. I, I, I recommend it. So moving on to that. 2022. So we have your Virgilio Morris Jennings Troika, which is this album. So it's, and it's a rather new title. I actually don't do too many new titles uh, in the progressive rock canon. Um, it's three musicians that united to form a trio. Uh, first, Nick DiVirgilio, it's a tongue twister, man. <laughs> he came from Spock's beard, but you know, he was he's the drummer in Tears for Fears. Bet a lot of people didn't know that. And he's the drummer on the last Genesis Studio album, Calling All Stations, which was 1997, the last Genesis Studio album. After Neil Morris left Spock's beard, Dear Virgilio took over the singing and co-composing role. And um, he did that for a number of years. And then um, Enchant lead singer, Ted Leonard replaced him in 2011 as lead singer, but Nick was still drumming. And Nick is also the drummer with Big Big Train. Um, Neil Morris, as most of you know, should uh, or should know, was the singer, songwriter, guitarist in Every Bird and the Animals for a period of time, a member of Spock's Beard, as I just mentioned, a solo artist, a member of Transatlantic, um, a member and leader of many other bands, including the Neil Morris Band, and Ross Jennings, which is the odd man out on this album, is the lead singer of Haken a progressive rock metal band formed in London in 1997, which has fans and supporters in both Prague and the metal communities. So what does Troika sound like? It's recently released. It's pretty much the missing Crosby, Stills, and Nash album. I kid you not. It's quite good. There's... Not a lot that would appeal directly to member uh, fans or the community of progressive rock listeners. But at the same time, um, I played Crosby, Stills, Nash's Deja Vu album after listening to this a few times. And I was like, damn, that's quite good. And it's quite close. So, uh, you know, in Crosby, Stills, and Nash, if you don't know, they have a classic rock, classic folk rock, amazing trio guys. They added Neil Young at times. Of course, we still Nash and Young, actually, it's deja vu, I, I misspoke. But there are solid songs. Um, if it was another time, quite a few of these would be hits on the radio. Is there a radio that still exists? 
or is it all satellite? And any radio stations may not pick up on this because three guys from different progressive rock bands make an album that sounds like Crosby, Stills, and Nash's missing record. So, anyway, I highly recommend this. I love it. So that's the show for today, and thank you for listening. I will catch up all with you in a few weeks. Stay well.